So this week's case is the Godard family disappearance. Um, so this took place actually in France, so there's going to be um, a couple things that I'm not pronouncing correctly. My father's first language is actually French, so I think I have a little bit more of an edge because I've heard it spoken so much growing up to others who you know maybe have never heard it spoken or have only heard it spoken rarely, but I'm gonna do my best and if you are French speaking or have a better grasp of the language than I do, please feel free to correct me, but just understand I am not claiming at all to know how to say any of this. Let's get started. In 1999, in North Brittany, France, an entire family disappeared. Yves Godard was a 43-year-old doctor and acupuncturist who was married to his second wife, Marie France. Uh, they had two children, a six-year-old daughter named Camille and a four-year-old son named Marius. On August 30th, 1999, Eves was planning on taking his kids on a fishing trip, so he pretty much canceled the rest of his appointments for that day and left earlier than he normally would to go get the kids. On September 1st, he took a sailing boat called the Nick from the port of St. Malo. His two children were also on board, but his wife was not with them. Later, neighbors would report that the couple the night before had had a very loud, very you know obvious argument. Apparently, Eve thought that Marie was cheating on him, so maybe he accused her of that. Eve actually told the man he rented the boat, the Nick, from that they were gonna be going on a small cruise. Um, he would be returning September 5th. Now remember, they were leaving September 1st. Before setting sail, he purchased some cleaning supplies and floor cloths at the port in St. Malo, and those were actually left in his van, which was parked at the port. On September 2nd, the Nick was searched by a French customs official in a very routine search, and that happened between Cape d'Irquois and Cape Frihel. The custom officials reported seeing one of the kids sleeping on the deck and allegedly Eves told them that his other child and his wife were sleeping below deck as well. The officials kind of felt like there was something strange about the interaction that Eve was acting kind of weird. Um, so they called St. Malo to basically double check his story with the owner of the Nick who obviously did support his story because at this point nothing was awry so they let him go on his way. At some point shortly thereafter, the wind picked up. So Eve basically decided, I guess, to cut the engines and just use the sails on the boat to continue the trip. At this point, the family appeared to have stayed for a few days near the Bay of Brihek. Several witnesses reported seeing the boat, as well as Eve and his children between the dates of September 2nd and September 5th. There was a waffle vendor at that port and she recalls a selling all three of them waffles on September 3rd and a couple walking by noticed the boat docked there on September 4th, but they did say the boat looked empty and then nobody was on it. On September 5th, which was the planned return date, the small dinghy that belonged to the boat, the Nick, was found by a fishing boat about 30 nautical miles from the Isle de Bat. Inside the dinghy, they found Eve's jacket and his checkbook, but no sign of the family or the boat. Once that dinghy was found, an investigation was opened up. They were trying to figure out where they were. Did they disappear? Were they okay? September 7th, the investigators searched Eve's van, which was still parked at that port in St. Malo where they had shoved off from, is that the proper terminology? Shoved off when you're on a boat? But anyways, they checked his car and that was when they found the cleaning supplies and the floor cloths. They also found quite a bit of blood and a, a lot of morphine too. Um, at this point, the investigation sped up and the next day, which would be September 8th, they went to the Goddard family home um, and then they searched it and that's where they found more blood. They found blood in the bathroom, the living room and the master bedroom. They sent the blood out to be tested and they also issued a, an international warrant for Eve's arrest. It was clear at this point something awful had happened and Eve was considered the prime suspect. The blood results from the blood found in the van and the home did not come back until a week later. That's typical actually for turnover on things like that. It doesn't happen you know, the same day or overnight like you see on TV. But at that point when the blood was tested, they found that it was Marie Francis, his wife and the children's mother, and she had not been seen since August 31st, before they left on the boat. 
That's when they began to search for her body. They said because of the amount of blood that they found, it was hard for them to believe that she was still alive. And at that point, there was no sign of any of the family. So they were all completely gone, disappeared. Nobody knew anything about where any of them were. Some crazy stuff began to happen. A lot of the Godard's belongings began to just pop up all over the place over the, the course of the next several years. On September 16th, sailors off the coast of Gornisi, Gornisi, they discovered a life jacket that belonged to the boat, the Nick. On September 23rd, the Nick's inflatable survival raft was recovered on a beach in the south coast of England. The raft was half deflated and its canopy looked like it had been broken off and the tow rope had been cut off as well. The emergency flotation device had also been removed. According to the manufacturer of that flotation device, with it being removed, the dinghy would have only been able to have stayed afloat for 72 hours after, you know, going into the water without that flotation device. Naval experts determined it would have been impossible for all of these items to just have kind of accidentally washed up ashore at these places. They looked into currents and weather conditions and all that and basically they felt that all these items were deliberately placed there because they could not have just accidentally washed up after going into the water. On October 14, 1999, a hotel owner on the Isle of Man claimed that Eve and his family had stayed there between the dates of September 7th and September 14th. At, at this point, sightings of the family began to pop up like all over the world. So we don't know what sightings were true or what sightings were just, you know, miscommunicated or misunderstood or what was just people just playing games. but. There was tons and tons of sightings of them. On January 16th, 2000, a canvas bag was caught in a fisherman's net and it appeared to hold like a bunch of personal items from the family, what looked to be the entire contents of Marie's purse, um, insurance cards, driver's licenses, credit cards. There was also two strange items, which were a hammer and binoculars. This was right around the time that the search efforts for Marie were suspended. Basically, they had been looking for quite a while. They couldn't find any sign of her. Nobody had claimed that they'd seen her. Um, they just decided to stop looking for the body. There wasn't any real information that I could find, and I looked very hard of why they decided to stop searching for the body, other than I just think that they weren't getting anywhere, so they were putting you know resources into something that they felt they were never gonna find. I think they assumed that she was dead and that had been, she'd been dumped into the ocean and they were just kind of wasting their time here. In May of that year, investigators went to Madeira, Spain, where Eve had a bank account to see if he had tried to take money out or if he had been there, but the account hadn't been touched since his disappearance, so this turned into a dead end. On June 6th, 2000, a seashell harvester, a seashell harvester, I've never even, I didn't know that existed. A seashell harvester was casting nets and he pulled off a fragment of a human skull. Um, and he ended up throwing that back, I guess. And I guess there's been a lot of people online who were like, why do you do that, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, if I pulled a human skull out of the water, I probably wouldn't think that it was part of any pending investigation. I don't know, I, you probably, as a seashell harvester, see a ton of things come up in your nets and you're just used to throwing it back. So he threw that back, um, but then, Four hours later, he pulled up another skull, which was a full skull, and he did hold on to that. So DNA was run on that skull, and it was confirmed that the skull belonged to Camille Goddard, who was the six-year-old daughter of Marie France and Yves Goddard. So that is very, very sad. So at this point, we have kind of, you know, confirmed that something really bad happened to this family, especially the, the children, because whatever was going on between Eve and his wife, they had nothing to do with it. They estimated, though, that the skull had been in the water since at least February of 2000. Authorities took this as proof that the Nick had sunk. Camille's skull was found quite close to where the Nick had been inspected on September 2nd. Remember when the French customs officials went on the boat and they only saw one of the children and then Eve told him the other one and his wife were sleeping underneath the deck. Camille's skull was found basically just 25 miles offshore from where they'd last been seen. They brought a bunch of equipment in to see if they could find uh, any other remains or maybe wreckage from the boat, but they found nothing. 
In February of 2001, Eve Goddard's business card was found on a beach by someone walking and it was off the coast of St. Jacut de la Mar. The same month his bank card was found on that same beach. The entire beach was searched as well as the nearby seabed, but they found no trace of the neck or of its occupants. On June 3rd, another credit card was discovered by a diver in the water at that same beach and on July 31st, another one was discovered. It was suspected that Eve or someone else um, he may have stopped at this beach and just emptied the wallet out. We don't know why. Maybe trying to get rid of the evidence, maybe trying to throw police off. Cards were analyzed in a forensics lab and it was determined that they had not been in the water long before they were discovered. So essentially, we're talking a couple years after they've gone missing and allegedly the boat sank, you know, pretty soon after the family went missing. But these cards that washed up on the beach had not been in the water that long. So in 1999, the authorities got some tips from anonymous letters, which caused them to focus a lot of their efforts on the Isle of Louis in Scotland. Um, according to the mystery writer of these letters, Eve boarded a ferry in Louis with his children. And another letter said that all three of them had been spotted on the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man is an island in the Irish Sea and it's between Great Britain and Ireland. They put up posters, they passed around pictures of the family, they put a lot of time and effort onto you know, these areas, trying to get locals to find some information or give up some information. Um, this same person who wrote the letter saying that the family had been spotted in these areas also wrote another letter to the authorities directing them to a cemetery storeroom about three miles from the Goddard family home, saying that they would find the remains of Marie France in that room. They did find bones in that room and those bones were then sent out for testing. Unfortunately, the bones did not end up being hers. I looked all over but I couldn't find out if they ever figured out who the bones were from or why they knew they weren't hers or anything like that, but they weren't hers so the search continued. In 2003, a brief case was found that a lot of people believed to be Goddard's. Um, they, I believe they dismissed that briefcase as being, you know, connected to him. They eventually just thought it was a hoax and, you know, somebody trying to either play with the police for their own entertainment or somebody connected with the case who was trying to throw them off and point them in a different direction. But either way, it's generally believed and assumed that that briefcase did not belong to Eve Goddard after all. Finally, in September of 2006, they found a couple bones. Um, they found the femur and the tibia of a man, and that was found in the seabed at Herd's Deep, which is a deep underwater valley in the English Channel. They were identified eventually as belonging to Eve Goddard, and that was when it was basically determined that Eve and his family were all dead. December 14th, 2008, a plastic insurance card belonging to Eve was found in perfect condition on a beach in Chappelle, France. This was nine years at this point after the family had disappeared. So the next logical question would be, why was that insurance card in such pristine condition? Because if they had sunk and their bones were being found in the water, then their belongings would have been in the water as well and they would be washing up and they wouldn't be in good condition and it wouldn't be showing forensically that they hadn't been in the water that long. So this started to kind of raise a lot of red flags for people who were following the case and thought something went wrong, some foul play was involved, something was afoot. Despite so many people, including law enforcement officials, realizing that something about this case wasn't right, they did end up closing the case and they closed it on September 14th, 2012. The magistrate who closed it made the statement, the only hypotheses we can exclude is that the family's disappearance is the result of a simple sailing accident. And then he went on to say, we cannot confirm that Eve Goddard killed his family. So basically he said, we know this wasn't an accident. Like that's basically the only thing that we know that this could have been an accident, but we don't really know what else happened. And we can't actually prove that Eve killed his family or had anything to do with what happened to him and his family. In 2016, Marie France and Marius were both legally declared to be dead. Now remember that they found the skull of Camille and they found the tibia and femur of Eve, so they definitely knew or you know thought they knew that these two people were dead. Obviously, Camille definitely was and there's some um, 
discussion about whether Eve is or not, but you could definitely say those two people were dead. They never found any remains from Marius or his mother Marie France, so they really, it, that's why it took longer to make the statement that they were declared dead. The last piece of evidence to surface from this case was recently. It was a small child's skull found on a beach in Brittany. No child disappearances were reported in that area and the location was the same as where some of the Goddard's belongings had washed up. Um, it's thought that the skull belongs to Marius Goddard, but DNA is still being run to determine for sure because this was just literally, I feel like this was in the beginning of 2018. I think it was April of 2018 that they found it. So we are looking at, you know, a couple months of, you know, running DNA. I haven't heard anything about it yet. I looked everywhere. If I do hear something, I will post an update to this video to let you know. So let's move on to the theories really quick. There are a couple and of course they're crazy as theories often are. Um, the first theory is that he did it, right? Eve Goddard is responsible for this. This is the most widely believed theory. What we think happened is Eve discovered that his wife was cheating on him or, you know, thought for sure that she was cheating on him, so he killed her in the family home. At that point, he realized like, oh, I crap, I killed my wife, there's blood all over, I have to get out of here. So he grabbed his two kids, you know, rented the sailing boat, not really expecting to come back, and then just took off hoping to find a place or a safe haven to to land. It is believed that after killing Marie France, Eve did put her body in the car, which is why there was blood found not only at the home, but in his car. And that's what the floor cloths were for, and he wrapped her up and then tried to clean up after himself and um, and then probably put her on the boat with him and the kids and, and dumped her body at sea. That's the most commonly believed reason and theory for why this all happened. The theory branches off a couple of different ways. The first branch off from that theory is that Eve wasn't really a great sailor. You know, he was a doctor, he, you know, was a businessman, whatever, but he wasn't that great of a sailor, so he lost control of the boat and it sank, um, killing himself and his two children. The more interesting branch off from that theory is that he is still alive um, and that he is the one that's been kind of discarding his bank cards and the family's belongings randomly across, you know, different beaches and different countries even and um, that he's doing that in order to lead the police in a different direction and keep them away from him. Sadly, that branch off of the theory would mean that he would have had to kill his two children in order to make this happen and i mean as hard as that is to like hear and understand it's not crazy it happens all the time people kill their own children he probably would know the police were looking for him and that they'd be looking for a man with two small children and he might have thought it would be easier for him to fade into the background if he didn't have two small children with him now the police did find his femur and tibia that would assume that he was dead, but it's not impossible to live without a femur and a tibia. He was a doctor, he had knowledge of the human body, he would have had operating knowledge, and he did have a crap load of morphine in his car, which was possibly there to probably give it to the children before he put them in the water, and also to anesthetize himself before, anesthetize? Anesthetize himself before he possibly cut off his own leg. Like, it's not easy to imagine that you could cut off your own leg, but it depends how bad he didn't want to get caught for this crime and how bad he didn't want to go to jail. And somebody who's willing to kill their own kids in order to make it easier for him to run away from the police would probably cut off his own leg to make it easier for him to not be caught by the police and to make people think he was dead. There's an easier part of your body you could cut off, right? Like, even if it was just your foot or a couple fingers, um, and why would you put them in like this, the seabed? Why wouldn't you put them on a beach so that you can make sure that they were found unless they were on a beach and then something happened where they got washed away? I don't know. We don't know. But that is the theory. He did it and either he's still alive trying to, you know, run away from the cops and distract everybody from what's happening and make them think he's dead or he died with his children. And either way, that's really sad. The, the second theory is that she did it, right? And Marie France, the, the wife who hasn't been seen since August 31st, they say that 
you know, some people say that she possibly could have done it. And this is a huge stretch and it's not super believable, but bear with me. So it's thought that she could have been having an affair that her husband actually accused her of and she knew that he would never let her out of the marriage because he was controlling and, you know, had some issues. So she killed her entire family and then framed her husband for it. This became a possible theory because nothing but Marie's blood had been discovered. None of her bones, her body had never been discovered, so people thought that it was possible that she could have orchestrated the whole thing. Some people even say it's possible that the man she was having an affair with helped her and he and she were the ones that were spreading the, you know, bank cards and insurance cards and all the stuff in different areas. I don't think this is really what happened. I think that this theory was created because people feel that somebody who had something to do with this must still be alive today since the ship if it had sunk or if something happened to them would have happened years and years and years ago and all this stuff is still washing up years later and in really good condition like it hasn't been in the water so people feel like somebody has to be alive who was involved with this and I understand that feeling but I also don't think that Marie France was the person who did this um, I find it hard to believe that she would kill her own children in order to be with somebody she was having an affair with. I don't know, I'm sure it's happened, but I don't know. I just find it hard to believe. The third theory is a little confusing and I had a hard time wrapping my head around it, but it's the mafia connections. There's a French author and his name is Eric Le Maison. He wrote a book titled The Assassination of Dr. Godard. Um, which he theorizes that even his family were basically murdered by the Mafia. So Godard was a member of the French Union and Les Maisons. Did, he claims that several people associated with that same union were murdered. He thinks that Eve could have been one of them. According to the author, Godard put his money into tax havens in North France and the French Union was supposed to deposit it but instead they stole it and in the process of him trying to get his money back or making a fuss about it, they basically killed him so that they could have his money. The theory, although an entire book is written about it and I'll post the link to the book if you're interested, but it's in French which is another reason I couldn't really get like an accurate grasp of the theory because although you can find it um, translated into English. When you're doing direct translations like that, things are off and it's very hard to read and get through, but uh, that theory is very flimsy to me. I don't know. I'm sure if I read the book, I would find that there was a lot of supporting evidence for Les Maison to feel that way, but I don't know. I, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, you know. Only Marie's blood was found in the house and the vehicle. And then the other three family members were apparently killed at sea. So unless the mafia was like, let's set this up to make it look like Eve killed his wife and then brought him and his children out to sea and then the boat sank as a result of him doing that. I mean, unless they really went to those lengths to try to set it up and make it look that way, I don't see how it's possible. I really think that he did it. I think that's why he had morphine in his car, that's why he had cleaning cloths in his car, that's why he was acting weird when the French officials were, you know, questioning him about everything during the customs check. Even they noticed that he was acting off. Um, that's why he told them that his wife was sleeping on the boat even though, you know, she wasn't because she had already been killed or something bad had already happened to her long before they even got on that boat. It's clear he was trying to cover his tracks. I do believe that he, you know, may have not intentionally sank the boat and I even, I even kind of believe that he might still be alive and he is the one that's kind of like spreading this evidence now. Because if you look at it just like caught and dry, like he killed his wife, then tried to get away with his kids, then the boat sank because he doesn't know how to sail we would have found something about the boat, right? We would have found some wreckage from the boat or something more than the little bits and pieces of this puzzle we found that lead us to believe that they're dead but don't actually give us enough evidence to prove that. And somebody is still alive spreading these cards and personal belongings of the family around the area and 
sending letters to the authorities, putting them in different directions where they never actually find out anything and it's always a dead end. So it's that's that's what makes this that's what makes the story really cool because none of the theories as they stand are enough to explain the whole picture and the whole like mystery of the story and I really love mysteries like that but it's there's no closure once that skull that they found on the beach is either determined to be Marius's or you know somebody else's I don't even think that's gonna help because we already know the kids are dead right Camille's skull was found if if Marius's skull is found what does that tell us just that you know the kids are dead which we already knew it still doesn't tell us what happened to them who did this and who is alive today still kind of trying to throw police off the scent of what actually happened. It's a crazy, crazy story. It's very sad. I feel really bad for these kids. Like anytime kids are involved, you know, they're just living their lives, being kids, and their parents got stuff going on, whether it's, you know, extramarital affairs or mafia connections, and they're just hanging out, living their lives, not doing anything wrong. They don't have anything to do with this, and suddenly they're pulled into this whole thing that inevitably ends up ending their lives. And it's just really sad. So either way, I'm interested and hopefully more information at some point in the later years comes to light about what happened and who's to blame and who's responsible for this. So that's pretty much it for this. If you have any other theories or you've heard any other theories that you wanna share with me, I would love to know them. And let me know what you thought about the video. Let me know your you know feelings and thoughts about the case itself. If you like this, please hit like. And if you wanna see a new Mystery Monday every Monday, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for being here with me so that I can, you know, do something that really feeds my need for mystery and murder and, you know, unsolved cases. I appreciate you and I hope to see you again soon. Have a very good day. See you next time. Bye.